did. Hello, everyone. I'm Coach Jim Bilger, and uh, it's a little bit behind uh, what I was expecting to be scheduled for today, but I am here to talk about why cupcakes, um, what do cupcakes tell you about your sales profile? Sorry, I was taken aback by this. So hello, I'm Coach Jim Bilger, and I'm here in the States um, in beautiful, sunny Denver, Colorado. And I say sunny because it actually is sunny most of the time here. And I am a coach that focuses on the behavioral side of business. So we're going to talk today a little bit about behavioral sales. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And let's get started with this amazing talk. Thank you. Give me two seconds. I've taken it back a little bit. So my apologies. All right. So what do cupcakes tell you about your unique sales style? Let's talk about this a little bit. And, and let's just sit back and I'd like you to close your eyes and I'd like you to imagine that you are the amazing owner of this cupcake shop and or you're a salesperson in this cupcake shop. Your job is to sell wonderful amazing cupcakes. And I mean, there are a lot of people out there who ask, what is it about cupcakes that has to do with your sales style? Well, let's just imagine a little bit that you are the person who's in charge of this. And I walk in and you talk to me about this amazing cupcake that is on the screen right now. And as the salesperson, you have uh, events, you have sales, and you have marketing ideas around how to better sell your cupcakes. And one of those marketing ideas is called the cupcake of the day. And because it's a cupcake of the day, this amazing cupcake on the screen is going to be 50% off. And you think everybody loves this, what this cupcake presents. It's chocolate on chocolate. It's got a little bit of vanilla in there. I mean, it looks scrumptious, right? But as your customer, I look at you like this. I don't care for chocolate. I don't like it. Yes, I'm, a, I'm normal. Yes, I'm a human. Yes, I'm a woman. I'm not an alien. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I just don't care for chocolate. So you're not going to sell me the cupcake of the day. And there are many things that can occur about this. So what does that have to do with? Because this is my preference. And it has to do with preferences. So when we talk about behavioral sales, we're talking about preferences. And if you're trying to sell me something that's against my preference instead of this amazing vanilla cupcake with vanilla icing, by the way, I love just plain, simple, and just, just vanilla. That's what I love. You get me on a crazy day, I might want some sprinkles on it, but this is my preference. And if you know my preference, you're gonna be able to sell to me better. And that's what it's about. Preferences are what we're hardwired to do. This is something that it's in our brain. It's what makes us do the things we do, make the choices, make the decisions, take the actions that we take. We are motivated in certain directions and I'm motivated towards vanilla instead of chocolate. So if you have a cupcake of the day and this is a wonderful marketing idea and this is a wonderful sales idea and working within those type of things, yes, those things work and they work very well and they bring in business. But when you're really talking about behavioral sales, when you get the people into the shop and people don't always see the marketing idea, marketing that you put out there and things like that, you want to be able to understand what their preferences are, what they prefer, what they want, what they're motivated towards, why they do the things they do. And when you're really talking about connecting with people on a whole new level, you're talking about paying attention to what their preferences are. So there are three contributing factors to behavioral sales. There's heredity, role models, and experience. And when we talk about heredity, this is what we're born with. This is what's in our DNA. This is, this is everything that comes with us once we are born. So these are the things that we pay attention to. These are the things that are closest to our core. These are the things that we carry with us no matter what. 
The good news is, even if you inherit certain qualities, good or not so great qualities, you get to be in control of how you utilize that information once you understand what it is. For instance, I use my hands when I talk a lot. I'm an active profile. This is something that's part of my, it, this is something that I was born with. This is something I've been doing most of my life. And it's, it's part of who I am. But yes, there are things that I can do to ensure that I don't do it. I can put my hands in my pockets. I can use my hands holding something. There are things that I can do to ensure that I make people feel comfortable around me. The second area is role models up until the age of 12. So those people who are in our lives up until we hit our teen years that mold us into certain things. They are the people that we pay attention to. They are the people that we are learning from. And as children, we're sponges. We just take in all this information. So these role models are very important to contributing to our behavioral side of things. And then the last thing is experience. Everything that happens to us from age eight on. And a lot of, a lot of times I will talk to people and say, I don't remember what happened to me at age eight. And I'm like, if you really think about it, there are some things there that you probably do remember, but those things mold us. It's luggage that we carry with us. And I hate the term baggage because baggage is such a uh, derogatory term. I use the word luggage because we do carry it with us all these experiences that we have. So, um, oh, I see I have a thing that says, I'm going to keep going until I get. I'm going to close this down. My apologies, everyone. There is a little bit of a confusion here. 